Hello everyone, welcome to another Star Wars Old Republic video and for this video I'm going to be talking about some of the new data mine information on, on the new companions, mounts, and also some miscellaneous stuff that we're going to be getting. Now unfortunately for this video I do not have any images because this is all from the raw XML data mine files and what that means is we have the names and some little bit of information maybe of how it's going to be obtainable for the player base but we don't have any images or how it's actually going to play out in the game. This is all really speculative stuff but it is probably Probably going to be introduced at some point in time, um, and we do have the information. Oh, so we do have information on the items that are coming out of the two new cartel packs: the Imperial Command Pack and the Stalwart Leader Command Pack. And none of these items are in there, which means they're going to be coming much later. However, they have been data mined, and so let's get right into some discussion of what's coming. So we'll start with some of the new companions. We have two new companions. The first one is a Wampa companion. Now that is super cool, and that is actually going to be made available as a direct purchase from the cartel market during life day now life day is the Sotar equivalent of christmas and is that type of celebration going on and usually we have a ton of kind of recycled items being made available on the cartel market and what i mean by that is they're just items that are made available every single year during life day we have the festive armor set we have the snowball cannon that you can shoot at people and then you have some of these decorations that always show up but it seems as though for this life day bioware is doing a little bit something different and they're giving us a new bundle now this is a bundle that contains a wampa companion a festive tauntaun mount some eco sample decorations, a festive weapon tuning, and um, and that's all kind of thrown in a bundle together and given to people. That's probably going to cost a ton on the cartel market knowing these life day bundles and considering the fact that it contains a mount, companion, and a weapon tuning. So hopefully some of these individual items will also be made available for a direct purchase. However, at the end of the day, these are all new items coming during life day. So if you're looking to get a Wampa companion, Life Day is the time to get it, and it's going to be pretty cool. I definitely will actually think think about picking up one because uh, it'll be pretty cool to run around Hoth and stuff with a Wampa, and um, and just in general, that's a really cool beast companion in my opinion. Some of the other stuff sounds pretty cool too, like a festive weapon tuning, which probably just going to entail some green or red lights on your weapon, uh, obviously to um, imitate Christmas lights, and then maybe some snow parcels or stuff falling from your weapons as well. I apologize for all the background noise, it's just a, a noises in my apartment and unfortunately I can't shut them off at this time so hopefully it's not too disruptive for the narration. Uh, yeah, there's just nothing I can do about it. Alright, going on to the second companion, this is actually a Tukata companion. Now when I first saw this in the files, I'm like what the hell is that and I searched up some of the concept art online, it looks super cool, I got really excited. However, there actually are existing models of this beast. Yeah, these are This is actually an animal that you fight on Korriban and so this is how it's probably going to look in the game because that's the model that already exists. Nonetheless, it is actually a pretty neat um, beast companion. Uh, when you think about other companions we have like the Exobor, it's kind of reminiscent of that. looks really cool. I think it's going to play out really nicely. It's not quite as good as the concept art. In my opinion, it's a little bit milder than that, but nonetheless, it is still really cool. And um, and I think Bioware is going a little bit too trigger happy with these beast companions because we're getting tons of them. I think Bioware needs to, honestly, I just think they need to tone it down with these cartel packs because we have so many companions made available in game and I think uh, people just need some time to digest the ones you already have. However, I'm not really complaining because I love these beast companions. I think they look super cool. And even though I haven't really collected any of them myself, I like getting them out of cartel packs and selling them because people pay tons of credits for these things. But that is yet another companion coming. And that concludes that. We only have uh, the data mining information for both of these companions going on into the mounts now the first mount I want to talk about is the Wrathful Rancor. Now this is yet another Rancor mount coming into the game and the reason that's a little bit surprising is because we already have so many models available. Now all the models we have existing currently are gold rarity and that's what kind of scares me because the fact that they're releasing another Rancor uh, might indicate that it's actually going to be silver rarity rather than gold and that's not a too far off assumption because they've done that with literally every other mount that was even remotely cool. Think about the Veraticus. When that first came out in the Acolyte Shadows packs, the hype was crazy. People wanted it so badly, and then um, you know people paid tons of money to get it. And then in the Disavowed pack, Byro released a silver version of it called the Cave Veraticus. Now that sold for like 300k on the GTN. It totally flooded the markets, and now there isn't as much of a demand for Veraticuses because there's a silver version that people can afford very, and they can ob obtain it very, very affordably. And that's a little bit unfortunate for people that might have been holding on to it or might have spent a ton of money getting this exclusive mount that isn't so exclusive anymore. While the specific model that they might have, 
might be exclusive, like the Savannah Varanda Kiss. You can't really get that anymore, that's really rare, but who cares because it looks very, very similar to the Cave Varanda Kiss. Bioware is very infamous for just reskinning items and making them look very similar. So the bottom line is I hope they don't do that with these Rancors. I don't want a silver version of a Rancor because, in my opinion, they're one of the nicest mounts in the game. I think they should stay gold, they should stay exclusive and not be really ma made available just to everyone who wants one. Because uh, I guarantee you, if it comes out as a silver version, it's probably going to drop pretty low on the GTN and unfortunately it's going to totally flood the market and everyone gets a Rancor and then what was really the point uh, of getting one of the older versions that were much more expensive and much harder to obtain. Uh, they've also did, done it with jetpacks, they've done it with white fangs, tauntauns, every single mount has, has gone through that cycle where they've been released as a gold mount a long time ago and then eventually they release as a silver version which totally floods the market. So I hope that's not the case. Uh, the next mount is also kind of scaring me a little bit, it's the Corrupted Acklay. Now, we already have a few gold models in the game, well, we have one gold model but that was made available in the Visionary Packs, and we also have a, an Acklay that was a ranked PvP reward, so I hope this is yet another gold version of a mount and it's not a silver version, because once again I would like Acklays to remain exclusive as well. It's really cool, it was a gold mount, you know, these really cool mounts that actually have effort put into them and people actually want, they should stay gold rarity in my opinion. Another little thing about this Corrupted Acklay that's exciting is the fact that it's corrupted, and usually any mount or, or decoration or anything that has uh, the term cybernetic or corrupted tends to actually look really really cool. I'm thinking about this cybernetic rancor which is probably one of the nicest rancors in the game. It has all these cybernetic limbs and stuff. So hopefully this corrupted acne will look really really cool as well. The fact that it's corrupted might you know make it look really menacing, have some really nice dark side effects to it. So that will be interesting to see. The next mount I want to talk about is the Savage Falone. This is actually a new mount that's going to be made available because we don't have any Falones in the game right now. What you see in the background here is an image of a Falone, and this was actually an animal that was in the Star Wars Clone Wars TV series. I instantly recognized it. And it's kind of going for that bird theme because we've seen with some of the other ones like the Oro birds that were uh, made available as mounts during this Shadow of Revan expansion because you could find them on Rishi. Uh, those weren't too popular, however, it's kind of going along that theme because they look very similar to birds. Nonetheless, it's going to be a gold mount most likely and it's probably going to be... Um, you know, reskinned as a silver version later on. Like, it's one of those mounts that I can totally see that happening. I'm not too crazy about it either. I don't think it looks particularly nice. Definitely not like a Rancor or anything like that. So, I don't think it's going to be too popular. Nonetheless, something new, and that's always something to get excited for. So, the next mount isn't too exciting at all. It's just a Scorched Dewback. We already have so many Dewbacks available. The recent Scavenger Packs had a silver version of a Dewback in there. So, it's, you know, it's not too exciting that, oh yeah, we're getting another Scorched Dewback. But nonetheless, that mount's in there as well for anyone that might be wanting another chance of getting one. And the final mount that I have here on my list is the Strategic Walker Alliance mount. So it's yet another walker mount. Once again, I'm hoping it's not a silver version of one. I'm really opposed to that. Nonetheless, uh, everyone's going to be getting a walker mount basically for the Kotet subscribers. For, so anyone who was subscribed during this period before Knights of the Eternal Throne will have access to a walker mount that they're getting as a sub reward. So I think that's going to devalue walker mounts a little bit because everyone's already going to have access to one. But, uh, but it'll be cool to see how this one looks. Hopefully Bioware does some really cool things to make it stick out from the rest and doesn't just reskin walker mounts because we have so many now available. And I think it was um, uh, in one of the recent statistics that Bioware did uh, back when they were first announced Kotet, uh, they were showing some of the most popular mounts. I think walker mounts and tauntauns were, were some of the least popular mounts. So I'm not sure what the logic is behind releasing more walker mounts. I don't think it's going to increase its popularity or anything. But nonetheless, that's another mount coming. So that concludes the mounts that going on into number three, which is the miscellaneous items. So there's not much information about these. I'll just kind of shoot them out there so you guys have that information. The first one is Senya Tyrell's hollow statue. So that's another uh, hollow statue being introduced into the game. And the only hollow statues available right now are like Satil Sean, Darth Malgus, Revan. Those are all really, really old models and they're really expensive on the GTN. So it's, it's nice that Bioware is kind of giving us another one, which is going to be Senya Tyrell's Hollow Statue. The point of it being, allow for any of the new players who are coming into the expansion to also have access to a Hollow Statue. It's most likely going to be a direct sale from the cartel market. That's what it was data mined as. Uh, I'm not, I don't think it's going to come out of a cartel pack or anything. The second and last thing I want to talk about is the Strap a 
attachment weapon tuning. So this is yet another weapon tuning that's going to be uh, introduced into a cartel pack. It actually might be one of the newest new cartel packs we're getting when Knights of the Eternal Throne hits because although the armor sets and stuff has been data mined, the, the weapon tuning associated with those packs has not been data mined. So this one could definitely be in one of those. It's probably just going to add a strap to your weapon and it obviously won't be applicable to lightsabers. That's not anything new because we saw with the laser tuning that it was only available for people who had blaster rifles and stuff and you weren't allowed to use a laser on your weapon on your lightsaber which didn't make any sense at all so uh you know obviously bioware is making tunings that are just specific to certain weapon types and the strap attachment tuning is probably going to be just specific to once again blasters and stuff and i'm thinking that it's going to emulate like bosk's blaster or something like that i think that's kind of what is what it's inspired from because that's one of the most iconic uh, blaster rifles that everyone knows has a huge strap associated with it uh, and so that's going to be a new weapon tuning and that kind of concludes the video that's it for uh, these new data mine informations i thought this was all really cool i'm definitely excited for a lot of this stuff coming and i hope you guys are as well at the end of the day i hope you guys enjoyed the video i really hope you guys found it informative and i'll see you in the next one